So now we've passed the guard. I've taken the guy down. I've passed the guard. And now I'm in a dominant position. It could be side or back or, or mount. Now what I want to do is I want to keep that position. I want to talk about a couple of things. One, a lot of times a big guy, even if they have a lot of skill, they're going to move you around either the right way or the wrong way. So it may look like Ugh, like that, or it may be a good shrimp and a good bump. We don't want to get tapped out by little people. You do not want to get tapped out by little people. Your girl is on the sideline. You brought your mom. Your mom came in from out of town. Go, step in. She's watching. You know, they, you don't want to look bad. So if things are start, starting to go bad for the big guy, he's going to use whatever he has, and he's going to throw you off, right? We will bite, we will eye gouge, we will tickle, <laughs> and then if that doesn't work, we'll bite dirty. Exactly, exactly. And so, on a general level, I want to make sure that when I get on top, my first goal is stay on top. I don't like moving just to move. But if you're moving me, and it's a, it's a choice between I'm in mount and me going to half guard on top, or you rolling me over, I'm going to take half guard on top. I want to stay on top. So that's kind of a, something I want people to keep in their minds is that if you get on top, stay on top. Sometimes you're gonna to have to downgrade a little bit. And you don't wanna do that, you don't wanna accept it, but sometimes you can't handle it. And two, the big guys are gonna move you. Like I said, in, sometimes it's a technical way, sometimes it's an untechnical way. And so we have to learn how to move around their movement, make adjustments, so we can stay on top. Make sense? Yeah. Let's start off with side control. Okay. The, the, the first two things I wanna show are very simple, very basic, but they are also very, very important. I get a lot of mileage out of them, and if you're not doing them, people are definitely escaping once you get them in side control. And there's basically two things that Stefan's going to do. One, he's going to just do like a power bridge, boom, like that. And two, he's going to do more of a technical shrimping movement, like that. And a lot of times, a big guy may start with that, like, oh, I'm going to do the right jiu-jitsu, <laughs> but then the little guy stops it, and then, then comes the big power. So we have to be able to deal with both those things. So let's start with the bridge. So let's just, for, for, for kind of demonstration, just kind of be here. Yeah. So I'm going to be like this. So the big bridge comes. If I don't do anything, go ahead. Bang, he's going to push me way off. So all I want to do when the bridge happens is I want to get as far away from his hip as possible. If I'm going to try to like control his hip, it's going to be hard. I mean, that's the power plant. That's, that's where all your power is going to come to. And so if I put myself on it, you can lift me up easy. It's not hard. I can even lift you up that way because everyone's hip is powerful. So if the guy's bridging, I want to turn away from it. I want to turn here like that. I want to go over the head, switch my hip, and I can use this hand to base on his hip or to block his hip or to stiff arm. So if Stefan's hip go back down and he raises and he bridges really hard, I don't even move really. So that's on a basic level and even on an advanced level, if a guy is just kind of freaking out and all he wants to do is try to throw you off, that's a very simple way to, to just maintain your position. So again, where are your arms in relation to my head and are you you're putting your pressure on my face or my upper chest or where, what are you doing? What I want to do is, so I, let's say I'm here for now. So I'm here. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to switch my arms. So like in slow-mo, if you raise your hip up, what I want to do is I want to drop my hip to the floor as I reach over, and I want to bring this elbow all the way to the floor and kind of right next to your ear, and I kind of scoop under your body a little bit here. And then I switch my hip. And that's kind of all one fluid motion. And then this hand, you can see how my elbow is down. And I'm kind of just putting my, you know, my back onto your face just to make it uncomfortable. I'm sitting on my hip, but I have this foot here for my base. And then this hand is a lot of times it's just going to kind of float wherever it needs to be. It may be there. It may be here. It may be on the belt. It may be on the ground. But either way, I have the head trapped and I'm as far as away from the hip as possible while still being connected to you. Mm -hmm. Something else that happens is that kind of guard recovery thing. So again, I might be here, and you're just going to start turning and trying to bring that bottom leg inside. Exactly. So as soon as 
I feel that I'm just going to turn and sit my hip to the floor. So when my hip is there, he, he, he's never going to be able to get underneath me. It's, just, it's not going to happen. So again, on a basic level, when he goes for that kind of guard recovery, I just switch. And I'm going to have my underhook here, and I'm going to go here. And you saw how when, when Stefan did that, he instinctively had his elbow down. Because he, he's a black belt too. So he knows that he wants to bump my hip a little bit with his, his, his elbow. And once he, yeah, right there. So the fight may not be over once I get here. It may continue. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I control. I can grab the sleeve, but I have to actually control the elbow. So when he's bringing that hip down, I need to not only pull, but also drive him back flat. So I get here. But I don't want to get my hip up so high that your leg can come in. Yeah, exactly. I need to keep my hip as low as possible. And I'm actually kind of like pushing sideways like this, as opposed to like that. That's very powerful. It, it's You're strong. driving against the ground and rolling me back. Yeah, it's almost like, a, like you were using a rolling pin a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here, whereas a lot of people would be like that, trying to lift you up. So when you make that connection, I'm going to just slide. And my hip is always connected to your hip. My hip is low. So I drive him back down. Now, this kind of leads me to an attack that I can do. When I'm pulling, he wants to try to put that arm back where it was. So when I'm ready to set up this next technique, I want to give him one really big pull. I want to really like give him some oomph here, a little bit of his own medicine maybe. And then now when he puts that elbow down, what I want to do is I want to swim so I kind of have inside control. Now this is important. I want to use my hip and kind of my, like my butt against your thigh and I want to boom, make a little space. This knee is going to come right over the top here. So once I get here, and one second here. How's that feel, Stefan? That feels bad. It feels bad. <laughs> I have, a lot of times when people, when, when I trap people's arms or legs, I actually trap it in that little hole. But on this one, a lot of times, I actually put my weight on the shin right there. And what's going to happen is after 30 seconds, 45 seconds, I'm cutting off that blood flow. His arm's going to start to go to sleep, go to numb, get a little bit painful. All the blood's going to collect. It's really, really irritating and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to do is when I get here, I don't want to, I don't want to rush away from this position. I want to, I don't want to stick the fork into him until he's done. And so I have to cook him a little bit. I got to keep him there a little bit. And so one thing that I like to do is when I get here, I'm going to change my feet. So I'm going to kind of drive into him and stretch my legs slightly. And again, I'm going to do that windshield wiper motion here. So I don't move my first leg until the second leg comes over. And then I'm going to post like this. So again, I'm still sitting on that arm. I'm still cooking him. And again, he's going to start to get desperate. A lot of times, if he turns away from me, he's not going to get that arm free. If he turns into me and his shoulder moves back, that's how he's going to get his arm free. But people are going to get so focused on this arm, they're going to forget about this one. And that's exactly what I want. I have a good base here. I'm going to sink back into a spinning arm lock. I can block his head. I want to step over. And one thing that I always like to do is when I spin, I always want to control the pants. That way when I turn here, when I sit, he doesn't have that running escape. I can control him just like this. I can sit back and I can finish with an with a easy arm lock here. Just to do a quick recap, he's going to be here. So the first one was, was just kind of the big power bridge. So he lifts his hip, one, two, turn, base. The second one was he had, I don't want to say a lazy guard recovery, but just a, a simple one. So my hip turns down. I use my butt to block. And then, let's turn this way a little bit. This elbow is going to come into play. So he wants to try to lift me up, so I have to control the elbow. And remember, I'm driving straight into him, making him flat. And then, I want to set him up. I want to pick it up. He wants to get the elbow back to the floor. I let it go. I swim. I back up. I, I start to cook him. He's in the pot right now. 
Then I want to move to the secondary. I bring my leg over. Remember, don't take the first foot off until the second one makes contact. I'm going to base here. He wants to try to turn into me to escape this arm. That's exactly what I want. Control this arm. Base. Step over. My foot goes to the floor, not my knee. This hand goes right for the pants as I turn here and I finish.